resolution of obtaining the right to vote was a difficult and extensive journey from the founding fathers in the 18th century to the fight for the right to vote for women and African Americans in the 19th century. From the 15th Amendment, which gave all male U.S. citizens the right to vote, to the demand for women's suffrage. Even if they did not possess land, most white males enjoyed the right to vote first. Women, African Americans, and Native Americans, on the other hand, were still entitled to vote. Finally, the 15th Amendment secured all male citizens of the United States the right to vote. This meant that white and black males could vote, but white and black women were still denied the right to vote. Tensions between female suffragists were heightened when the 15th Amendment was proposed that only permitted black males to vote. Everything came to a climax in May of 1869 at the American Equal Rights Association's annual meeting. In a heated dispute, two champions and close friends fight head to head. Specifically, I'll focus on Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony, both abolitionists and proponents of women's suffrage, who engaged in an acrimonious argument over the 15th Amendment. In August of 1865, after the Civil War, Susan B. Anthony found disturbing news from Washington. Under a proposed 14th Amendment, all born or naturalized people in the United States are guaranteed citizenship. The 14th Amendment also added the first mention of gender into the Constitution. It declared that all male citizens over the age of 21 should have the right to vote. Provoked, Susan B. Anthony packed her belongings and boarded a train back to her hometown, where she and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the mothers of women's right, would face a long and political battle. They fought tooth and nail to revise the amendment's language. They expected their male friends in the movement to support them. But Wendell Phillips pointedly told Stanton, women should be patient. Their time would come. This hour, he said, belonged to the African Americans. The 14th Amendment was ratified without alteration on July 9, 1868. On February 26, 1869, the 15th Amendment was passed with the purpose of reinforcing the 14th Amendment. It says that no one should be denied the right to vote on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Stanton and Anthony battled hard to include sex on the list. Susan was enraged by this because she recognizes that her cause is just right and good, and that it has been carelessly overlooked, and that she has been denied justice. When they were unable to revise the amendment to include women's right to vote, they decided to openly oppose the amendment as a whole. I would rather cut off my right hand than ask the ballot for the black man and not for woman. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, frustrated and enraged, criticizes the liberated slaves for whose freedom she has fought for her entire life. Empowering people who are marked by ignorance and degradation would result in terrifying outrages against womanhood. Sambo, like the immigrant newcomer, wasn't ready for the vote. That caused Frederick Douglass, who had considered himself a friend of Stanson's, to feel betrayed and ask to be heard. When there were few houses in which the black man could have put his head, this woolly head of mine found refuge in the house of Mrs. Elizabeth Cady Stanton. There is no name greater than hers in the matter of women's rights and equal rights. But the employment of certain names such as Sambo, that I cannot coincide with. Frederick Douglass, who had previously been a vocal supporter of women's rights, claimed that black man's enfranchisement was more important than women's. He asked that the amendment remain unchanged. I must say that I do not see how anyone can pretend that there is the same urgency in giving the ballot to woman as to the Negro. When women, because they are women, are hunted down through the cities of New York and New Orleans, when they are dragged from their houses and hung upon lampposts, when they are the object of insult and outrage at every turn, when their children are not allowed to enter schools, then 
They will have an urgency to obtain the ballot equal to our own. Now, Susan B. Anthony rose to speak. Is that not all true about black women? Yes, yes, yes. It is true of the black woman. But not because she is a woman, but because she is black. When Mr. Douglas tells us that the cause of the black man is so perilous, I tell him that wronged and outraged as they are by this hateful and mean prejudice against color, he would not today exchange his sex and color, wronged as he is, with Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Douglas argued that the right to vote for a woman was not as urgent as the right to vote for a black man. Anthony told him he would not exchange his sex and color with a woman. They each claimed that the lack of suffrage put them in danger in different ways. African Americans were harassed because of their color, while women were considered male property and were financially and politically controlled. Sojourner Truth supported Anthony and Stanton, while Frances Harper sided with Douglas. In the end, the Equal Rights Association voted overwhelmingly to support the 15th Amendment. Anthony and Stanton felt betrayed that Douglas supported the 15th Amendment after being a longtime proponent of universal suffrage, that is, both men and women, black and white, may have the right to vote. They were furious that they would have to wait even longer for the rights they had fought for decades. We gave up the counsels of men forever and knew we could only rely on ourselves to win these rights. We have witnessed a flourishing country throughout American history. In 1776, only white males who owned land were eligible to vote. In 1792, almost all white free men were granted the right to vote. At that time, the Founding Fathers postponed the issue of slavery in order to allow for the development of a new constitution. The Founding Fathers are often criticized for this. However, if not for that horrible compromise, we might not even have a country. Likewise, in a debate between Susan and Douglas, Frederick Douglass willingly delayed women's suffrage for black suffrage. As a result, in 1870, the right to vote could not be denied on the account of race. After the debate, Anthony and Stanton and their supporters left the meeting and founded a new organization, the National Women's Suffrage Association. The NWSA would not focus on any topics other than women's voting rights. At this point, the women's right movement becomes a women's movement. The 19th Amendment, which was enacted by Congress on June 4, 1919, and ratified on August 18, 1920, gives all American women the right to vote. This achievement comes after a long and arduous fight. Success came after decades of agitation and protests. The suffrage movement is especially relevant now because it aided us in achieving our goals as a country and people. The women's suffrage movement offers a unique perspective on American women's political participation. Hillary Clinton, the first woman to run for president, and Kamala Harris, the first woman to win the vice presidency. While the focus is on women's suffrage, the larger story is about how a powerless class in America was able to obtain concessions and guarantees without resorting to violence. Women's suffrage has had a fundamental change in society for the equality of gender in all aspects.